Hey guys, and welcome back to another Lost Bits video right here on Tetra Big Gaming, the series where we explore the unused, altered, and unseen content in gaming. September 29th, 2023 marked a whopping six years since the initial release of Cuphead. And although I thought the series was all wrapped up here on Lost Bits, to celebrate the occasion, a new update was actually put out for the game currently only on Xbox as well as Windows. And this anniversary update served as a celebration of the game, as it added a bonus option to the main menu, where in addition to adding a sound player menu where you can listen to all of the game's background tracks, various concept sketches were also added, as well as several videos offering a very cool glimpse into the game, including some new, unused material that was never before seen. So in this video, I'll be taking you through some of the highlights of this newly revealed unused content, including some more unused character designs, scrapped bosses, and more. And speaking of anniversaries, if you haven't heard, I recently launched some new merch celebrating the 10 year anniversary of this channel. The merch is only available for a limited time, so if you'd like to grab some and support the channel, check out the link down in the description. Anyways, with all that said, parry that like button down below, let's check out some more Cuphead Lost Bits. Alright, so first up, let's go over some of the highlights found in the newly added concept art gallery. Similar to how I covered in my Lost Bits video on the Cuphead art book, these concept sketches reveal various early designs of characters and bosses, as well as several ideas that were ultimately never realized. Now there's like 144 images here, so obviously, in the interest of time, I won't be diving into all of them, and I'll just be focusing on the ones that show off more interesting changes or scrapped ideas, as some of the sketches aren't super remarkable relative to the others, as they just feature early sketches of designs and such that did make it into the game. Anyways, starting off with our boy Coophead himself, right away there are sketches of what looks to perhaps be a scrapped idea of having an intro graphic appear before each boss fight, like something similar to what's seen in some fighting games, as here we have a big Cuphead on the left, Goopy the Grand on the right here, a Technocop City skyline here, and then just blank spaces on the other two sketches. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of context included for the images in the gallery here, so there's gonna be a lot of speculating in this video. Then next, we have four unused ideas for Cuphead's animation when entering into a stage. There's Cuphead, I guess, solidifying from some liquid that would be poured out into the level, him spawning in pieces and then magically reassembling, Cuphead being beamed in by a spinning ring that looks like his signature red and white straw, there's a sketch of him dropping down into a stage on what looks like one of the stars that's seen in the fight against Sally stage play. And then lastly, there's another plan with a spinning ring, only here it would act like a portal and would simply just have Cuphead jumping out of it into the fray. Then next, there's surprisingly actually more interesting stuff for our pal Mugman here. First, there's a whole bunch of ideas for Mugman's animations, again presumably for when starting a fight. In order, as numbered on these sheets, there's Mugman doing one-handed push-ups, an animation where his eyes would count down like the start of an old movie, him puffing up and gorilla punching his chest, there's a sketch of both Mugman and Cuphead taunting an enemy, an arm spin intro, Mugman drawing some eye black under his eyes like a football or baseball player, there's him doing a crane pose like in Karate Kid, him adjusting his gloves, him having a winding up mechanic on his head that would seemingly wind up at the start of a match. There was an idea where Mugman would hold back an enraged Cuphead, Mugman tossing in a mouth guard, him ripping open his shirt to reveal an M, obviously a reference to Superman. There's Mugman doing the hand in jacket pose that Napoleon is often portrayed doing, which is a pretty obscure thing to reference for this game. And then there's also Cuphead and Mugman having whatever liquid is in their heads boiling as they're seemingly quite unhappy here. There's then actually another sheet which also seems to feature intro animations, and here we got Mug doing some stretching before a fight which did end up being used in the game. Him doing a backflip, inflating his arms to get swole, doing an old school boxing taunt, and then blowing up a bubblegum bubble, and I guess the cups were to exhaust a gas lighter than air as this bubble would cause him to float for a bit before ultimately popping. And the scrapped intro animations don't end there either, as there's also him plopping out of a large straw that would bounce up to the ceiling before spitting him out. And then, what looks like an idea based on Mario's entrance animation from Super Smash Bros, here Mugman would come out of a straw from the ground, but then here the straw would I guess shrink down and then plop back into his head. 
Then finally, other unused ideas here include him having his head screwed on, him spinning his head on his finger like a basketball, his straw acting like a fuse for his head exploding like a bomb for some reason, Mugman innocently tying his shoe or meditating with a bird on his head, him assembling from various parts like we saw earlier with Cuphead, him smelling a flower, playing with an airplane, walking with a little duck friend that would seemingly get scared away by whatever enemy would have been encountered, and then finally there's Mugman getting distracted by a butterfly that would fly around him. Now finally, moving on to Miss Chalice, first there's a cool mock-up where sketches of her were overlaid on a screenshot of the fight with Captain Brinybeard, I guess as an early test to see how she would look in-game. Then for more unused ideas, there's a pair of sketches for plans for Miss Chalice's dash move, the first of which would have had some sort of fire-looking trail effect, and then the second one which had a sonic boom-like thing at the front suggesting that maybe the move was once considered to actually deal damage. Then next, we can see several design ideas that were drawn up for Ms. Chalice's mini-plane form. The wide range of designs here seem to bounce back and forth between a more Chalice-based design, or one more so going for a pilot cap look, and some of them going for the cartoon dog-like face that was ultimately chosen. And interestingly, despite there being so many different designs here, none of them are exactly like the final design that the developers went with. Then next, there are some unused ideas for Miss Chalice's super attacks. We got one that, similar to the Ghost Stampede one in the final, would have spawned in a Miss Chalice spirit where ideas for it included some sort of projectile attack, a multi-arm move, or summoning either three ancient chalices to do a hard projectile attack, or a bunch of floating heads to again do another projectile attack. Then, it looks like Miss Chalice herself was also sketched with having a heart projectile attack in this sheet that explored different conceptual designs for her, including a butterfly-like fairy, or a design with her using a spear with some more traditional angel-like wings. And these different designs were also refined in this sketch where we can see the various different styles mocked up. There's her with butterfly, fairy, and angel wings, different outfit styles, her using a wand of some sort for a magic attack, a spear, as well as a bow. I don't know, some of these ideas really seem like they would have made for some fun gameplay mechanics. Then next, we also got several unused designs for soldiers and such that would have presumably appeared as part of Miss Chalice's ghost stampede move, including a dog pot thing, as well as a bullhorn. There's actually a mock-up of the previously mentioned three Ancient Chalice super attack here in the fight against Mr. Wheezy, where we can see the trio throwing their respective spear, and although it looks like it would functionally be pretty similar to the Ghost Stampede, visually, I think this could have looked pretty sweet. And then finally, we have yet another mock-up of what looks like a super attack where the ghost of Miss Chalice would possess her body. It looks, uh, pretty unsettling, so I'm not surprised that this idea didn't make the cut. Next, we got a whole page dedicated to King Dice, and first off, we can see various early concepts for the hub area of the boss fight, including a more board game-like layout, a roulette game where the player would have to parry a lever, a slot machine based game where the player would again parry a lever, there's another spinning roulette style idea, an alternate view of the game board where King Dice, a skeleton, an old timer, and a Sans would look on, and more. There's also this sketch which not only shows off an early idea where each of the mini boss battles in this fight would share the same backdrop of the Dice Man performing in the background, but we can also see that this appears to be a sketch of the card mini boss fight that was scrapped from the game which we went over in my first Lost Bits video on Cuphead. Also, based on the Dice Man name here, it looks like these sketches were made before the King Dice name was even decided on. Then we also got sketches of various early ideas for mini bosses here, and on top of bosses that did go on to make their way into the final game, like Chips Bedigan, Pippin Dot, and Mr. Wheezy. There are also more ideas here, like a penny attack, some sort of weird happy face eye thing, a rolling wheel from a slot machine, and then also, once again, the scrapped king card from the card boss fight, as well as these card suits that would also have presumably been a part of that fight. Then next, after another sketch which looks very similar to the final design, just with a different board that Cuphead would actually walk on instead of it just being in the background, there is a mock-up of the background that did end up being used in the final cut of the game, but what's drawn on it here is pretty interesting. 
Not only is there one less heart space here, and the order of the bosses are different than how they're seen in the final, but there's also a pair of bosses on this board that aren't there in the final version. First, there's this flower-looking boss that I guess resembles Plant Boy, and then all the way at the end is Calamaria. Does this suggest that these two were originally supposed to be King Dice mini-bosses? Not necessarily, as they might have just been drawn in as placeholders, and it's actually unlikely in fact, as these two were shown off as full bosses years before the game came out, but you gotta admit, it's pretty weird to see these here. Then after seeing a few concepts for how King Dice would guard the way to the devil including another large dice block, a bridge, as well as a giant hand, presumably the devil's, it's on to the next page that's dedicated for the devil himself. Although mostly just early designs for the devil's ram and spider-like forms, there's one concept sketch here in particular that stands out as it appears to show a different idea that was pitched for the final fight. The devil and his chair would have been several times larger than how it's seen in the final game, and then the player would have had to climb some platforms in order to reach the seat part of the chair to be able to shoot at the devil. And the idea here was that you could only stay up here for a short time, as the devil would flick you off, and then you'd have to do this repeatedly, as various devil minions would also spawn out of the chair. Although I quite like the devil fight that's seen in the final game, this idea seems like it would have been very interesting both from a gameplay standpoint, as well as just visually. And then, moving on to the other final boss of this game, we can see various early concepts for Chef Saltbaker. There's him just being a human, almost looking like Mario, a design where he would have had a wheel of cheese on his neck and the head would have been an egg apparently, one where he would have been a fox or something, straight up just a mushroom head, and finally there's this design of him being an extra thick fella. Other sketches here include a salt bay pose, some amazing programmer art of the chef holding a uh, cuphead. Yeah, I'm sorry, that's just a red line and some squiggles. And then similar to the other bosses, here too we can see some scrapped ideas for this fight as well. Although it was decided for the chef to basically always be a background threat, I guess except for the final phase, there were several ideas for him to be a more traditional boss, much similar in size to Cuphead, where he would have had attacks including using a large meat tenderizer to spin around with or smack down in an attack that could have turned the player into food, him using a pan to deflect attacks, making a soup in some sort of cauldron that would then fire the soup as a projectile attack, and then also an attack where he would pull a Kirby and try to suck up the player. What's extra interesting, I find, about this sheet is that it shows a larger chef using the rolling pin as he does in the first phase in the final game, and this is listed as Phase 2. So it appears that originally, the first phase of this fight was conceptualized as the fight against the smaller form of Chef Saltbaker. Then next up, under Swell Pals, there are various sketches of NPC characters that never ended up getting used, like various warrior-looking cups, early designs for the King from King's Leap, some early Elder Kettle designs, and more. Then after this, there are a few pages dedicated to the game's bosses, and of course, we start here with Inkwell Isle 1. We got various designs for Goopy's Tombstone, the creepy multi-eyed potato design for the Root Pack, which I believe we also saw in the art book video, as well as some early designs for Plant Boy being defeated where he looks incredibly sad. Like, honestly, I'd feel bad for defeating him if he ended up looking like this. But most interesting on this page, I find, are various ideas for the last phase of the fight against Hilda Berg. There was obviously a big emphasis on the moon phase's mouth here, as aside from a nose whipping attack, basically all the other attacks here seemed to use it. We got a spitting attack, the top of the moon having a mouth of its own, the moon's tongue would either have its own mouth that would cough up a projectile or would bring out Hilda's eyes, the tongue could have brought out Hilda in her original form as seen before the fight begins, an attack that would have had Hilda sucking up Cuphead through the nose and then spitting him out through a mouth at the top, and then lastly an attack that would have probably been the creepiest in the game. This would have a hand emerging from the bottom of the moon and it would then peel off the face's skin to reveal the skull behind it and would then unleash a barrage of projectiles. Yeah, I'm sure that wouldn't give anyone nightmares. And in addition to all of these attacks, there are also some scrap designs for Hilda here too, including a sheep, a robo-mech thing, some sort of cocoon, what looks like a little airship thing, and more. 
Then there's not all too much notable stuff for Inkwell Isle 2 here, aside from an early design for Grim Matchstick, an idea for a flaming marshmallow attack for Baroness Von Bonbon that was scrapped, as well as a scrapped attack for Wally Warbles, where he would flap to send shock waves that would push the player backwards into an oncoming wave of Flying Piranha, which would attack on the far left side of the screen. Then for Inkwell Isle 3, we got a bunch of unused designs for the boss fight, such as early designs for Rumor Honeybottoms, including one where she looks like she's about to ask to speak to a manager, a seemingly scrapped phase of Captain Brinybeard in a skeletal form, presumably seen after getting eaten by the fish here, alternate designs for the cat seen in the Werner Vermin fight, and then for Dr. Call and his robot, there are several scrap designs for the robot's head, as well as for his arm attacks, and then Dr. Call himself too has a few scrapped attack ideas here, including a spring-loaded boxing glove punch, a screw gun, a moving rail gun, a fire attack coming out of the vehicle's mouth, as well as the ability to spawn in mechanical bats from his hat. Although the first part of the robot fight is interesting, the last phase against the Doctor himself, I think, is rather bland as he only really uses one move, so these definitely would have been a welcome addition to shake things up there. For the Sally stage play fight, there's not too much here aside from this scrapped idea where the groom would end up being strapped to a log. The final phase in the Phantom Express fight had some unused ideas here including the train growing some legs to start running on the track like it's Flintstones, as well as an attack where the front of the train would turn towards the player and the chimney would either turn into a hammer to smack the player or a blast of steam would be shot out instead. Then we also got a few unused ideas for Calla Maria, including her snake hair opening her eyes to do her beam attack. And then finally, there was an idea where Calla Maria's entire head would straight up just turn into a snake, a snake hedusa, if you will. Then after this, we saw a few of the Inkwell Casino bosses earlier as part of the King Dice page, but they get their own dedicated page too, and here we can again see the scrapped card mini boss a scrapped dice boss, an unused design of a champagne bottle and glass, presumably for the tipsy troop, there's an unused cigarette spitting attack for Mr. Wheezy, as well as a pitched attack where the devil or King Dice's lips would appear from one of the ashtrays to blow the ash away, and then there's also this sketch of Mr. Wheezy where, again, it makes me feel bad for him as he must have some deeper problems that's making him smoke the sadness away. Then we also got a few early designs for Pirouetta, Hoppus Pocus, a scrapped glass boss that would throw dice at the player, and then a scrapped, uh, watermelon bread slice? Sure. We can also see ideas for the mouth, including a sketch of it making the pog face. This one design here really resembles Mangosteen, like almost to a T, so it's likely that this boss was reworked into the 8-ball fella. Then there are also a few scrapped attacks for Fear Lap, including throwing some large balls, cards, as well as some coins, and the entire aesthetic of this fight in these sketches looks different too. Less so a creepy Halloween-like backdrop, and more so a casino to match the King Dice area with the horse racers being propped up from the table, akin to the horse racing machines seen in casinos. And then lastly on this page are several scrapped ideas for the Mr. Chimes fight, including several death animations like him saluting before being dropped, him diving, being spun by the claw, falling apart one piece at a time, straight up just being eaten by the claw, as well as him just decapitating himself with his symbol. Yeah, I can see why that one wasn't chosen. Also for this fight, we can see what looks to be alternate designs for the entire character, where instead of being a symbol monkey, it was conceptualized as a humanoid doll, a unicorn, an angry looking dog, or a frog. While I think these other designs are pretty cool, I do think going with the symbol monkey was the right call. And then the final page of this gallery is all about the delicious last course DLC, and here we got some unused designs for the moonshine mob bugs, including several for the main boss of the mob. We get to see some much creepier designs of Jupiter the snow beast, another much different design of the queen where she would appear much more human-like, and then there's also this scrapped stage layout that just based on its appearance looks like it was meant for the King's Leap section. Now I'm a big fan of this MC Escher inspired backdrop and think it's visually stunning with the chessboard on the bottom, checkers on the top, and then the mess of things going on in the background. But as cool as this looks, the developers decided to make the background in real life again much like in the fight against Jimmy the Great which is honestly pretty amazing. There's definitely not a lot of games that do stuff like this, that's for sure. 
But if you notice, this background did at least somewhat get preserved as the floor section is very similar with similar cracks, and these gears are down here on the bottom right too. But lastly, my favorite of the images on this last page here isn't even a concept sketch as it appears to actually be a screenshot of gameplay taken when developing the DLC. And here we can see some placeholder projectile graphics, green rectangles that appear to be early versions of where the gnomes can pop up, and then yeah, let's address the elephant in the room. Here we can also see several instances of the Jareed head graphics that we covered way back in my first Cuphead video. Here, the ones with a Cuphead style body appear to be placeholders for the gnomes that can pop out of the ground, and then these other ones, including the two yellow tinted ones, are for something else. My guess would be the other gnome attack from the giant's mouth where they cook up some gas projectiles in their cauldron. Anyways, I was honestly shocked to see these graphics pop up in the gallery here. A surprise, but certainly a welcome one. Now that's about all of the highlights of the gallery in a nutshell, but there are also a few interesting things that were added to the game in the behind the scenes video archive as well. In addition to getting an awesome glimpse into the making of the soundtrack, overworld background, as well as the real life models of the King's Leap Castle and trailer puppets, we also get to see some more unused content here as well. First, there's a short reel of an unused launch trailer. It even has some voice acting, and although it's still in the sketch phase, it's honestly really cool, and me just talking about it certainly doesn't do it justice, so here it is for you in full. We want the last course. We want the last course. Give us the last course. Bring us the last course. Hungry tummy so severe. Feels like it's been 30 years. Bring us the last course! Bring us the last course! It's here! The delicious last course! And then last, but absolutely not least, there's a video here that includes a metric butt-ton of early and unused animations. And here we got way more than I was expecting. First, we got some animations for unused things we already knew about, such as this unused bat boss, the secret plant boy flower that would say O, oh, that as we discussed in a previous video, actually still has some leftover coding remaining for it in the game. There's an unused intro segment for the giant seen in Rugged Ridge. There's another unused Calamaria attack. We finally get some more info here regarding the scrapped shield charm that we went over in a previous video. An unused attack animation for Werner Vermin, we got some animations of the scrapped squid boss, and then several animations are shown off for Patchy Patchy, the scrapped pachinko boss fight. And I think it's pretty interesting that these sketch animations were shown off here, but not the basically finalized ones that were seen in the launch version of the game. The boss fight was like 90% complete, so I guess I'll just be left scratching my head for all eternity as to why this fight or the airship squid were never finished up. And in the same vein, this video also reveals several previously unseen animations for the scrapped arcade level that's believed to have been called Coin Op Bop. Now I've talked about this scrapped level a decent amount in my previous videos, but interestingly, up until these animations were shown off, all we really had to go off of were references to a big Cuphead and Mugman, and from these, only some mock-ups were ever made. But now with these, we can actually see how the two were planned to play this level, win, as well as lose at it. Just like with Robo Squidward here, I really thought that this would end up getting added to the game at some point, but unfortunately, it looks like this will end up being lost media for the foreseeable future. But part of me is still hoping for a director's cut of the game or something that will include all of these scrapped bosses and concepts, especially the ones that were already more fleshed out for the game's initial release. It's unlikely, sure, but a man can dream. Anyways, I digress, let's get back on track here. This video also reveals several other unused characters that, as far as I know, were never before seen, and this includes a captain NPC meant for the also scrapped airship stage, an unused Grim Reaper boss, a scrapped version of the Whetstone charm where instead of an axe coming out of the fella's head, it would have been like a mallet or something. And then, very interestingly, this video also reveals a few scrapped parry challenges. There's a small pig run, which appears exactly how it sounds, a pig bounce and slide challenge, and then also just pig run. 
Now, it's unclear exactly how these would function, and I really wish some more context was provided for these, but my speculation is that it looks like the idea might have been that several of these pigs would run across the screen, and the player would have to keep parrying off their backs as they would run and jump across. This is honestly very cool to see, and although these ideas were never brought to life in the game, ultimately the idea of a parry challenge in general did get added as the King's Leap area in the Delicious Last Course DLC. And then finally, to plop the cherry on top of this truckload of new unused animations, this video ends off with gameplay from an alpha version of the game where they were testing Cuphead's walk cycle animation, and here we can see one of the earliest versions of the overworld map screen. And if you're a Cuphead history aficionado, you'll probably recognize this map, as this is the one that was shown off 10 years ago in the game's original and first teaser trailer. And interestingly, we can see the training dojo that was also shown off in that teaser is in a different spot here, as in the teaser it was found all the way to the right of this island. Now as cool as it was to see these unused animations and concepts, and as thankful as I am that we got these at all, I'd be lying if I said that my insatiable hunger for learning more about this game's earlier development and scrapped content was satisfied. But at the end of the day, not many developers are even this transparent with their behind the scenes development. So I will always have infinite respect for Studio MDHR for not only the incredible work they achieved with their artwork and animation, but also for their willingness to embrace and share their development of this masterpiece of a game. And that'll wrap things up for Cuphead once again, at least for now. Who knows, maybe we'll see some more surprises from the devs down the road again. Till that happens though, check out some of my other Cuphead videos, and be sure to subscribe to the channel to find your way back here in the future. And as always, thank you all so much for stopping by today, and I will see you in a bit.